How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. Today I wanted to start off by saying apolo big apologies on the delay in putting out any new content. I know some of you have uh, messaged me asking, you know, what I've been doing and all that. I've been working on a lot of things on the back end and I've been really busy with that and nothing I can share at this very moment. But as soon as things uh, kind of go into motion and everything's kind of set in stone and I can announce it, I definitely will. So I definitely do appreciate some of you reaching out and some of your concerns. And also, as you know, I live here in Las Vegas <clears throat> and the past two weeks has been have been insanely hot well hot enough where it kind of went from a nice 80 degree day and it shot up to like 108 110 i know that's not the hottest vegas gets but for it to do that at a very fast pace for june a little unheard of so kind of didn't really feel like working on the cars in the garage because it's just a giant oven everything in the, in the uh, garage is still kind of the same and moving a lot of parts just wanted to say a huge thank you to all the customers that have been, <clears throat> that have been ordering from us uh thank you so much definitely do appreciate your business and all the current people sending emails or dming on socials inquiring thank you very much hope to do business with some of you real soon and if you're interested in ordering any parts definitely hit us up uh, via email at info at m2-motoring.com or shoot me a dm on social media or you could visit the website, but I'd like to give you a fair warning. The website pricing for a lot of items outside Garage Unique are not up to date. It's the current world we live in. I am getting emails from all the companies I work directly with about every two to three months. Hey, we're going to increase the price. You know, we're changing our minimum advertised price policy, everything constantly. So I apologize on the pricing not being up to date on the site again. Just easier just to shoot me an email and I'll definitely quote you out. And there's a lot of products that we do carry that's not on the website. I do plan on updating, updating the website and simplifying it all just to make it easier for you and my also myself and Steve. So thank you again for everybody that's been ordering. Oh, and if you haven't already, uh, do me a huge favor, hit that like button. Uh, still doing the 1,000 subscriber merch giveaway. All you gotta do is subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow our socials on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And once I reach 1,000 uh, subscribers, I'm gonna give away some merch. So today I'm actually gonna talk about what happened with one of my cars. Actually, it's not this car. This is the most reliable car I've ever owned. Well, I've had a few of these, but all of them have never really given me any issues. It's this car right here. If this is your first time seeing this video, this is my 2008 Lexus IS250. This was built for the SEMA show uh, last year as an outside feature vehicle. I know it's nothing crazy. It wasn't intended to be. This is my daily driver up until yesterday so the short story is i was running errands driving across town and upon arriving to one of the locations that i needed to be at uh turning into the driveway the power steering gave out the center console all the electronics shut off but the car was still running the ac was still blowing but it stopped blowing cold now i know I have an idea what's wrong, but I would need to diagnose it properly because I don't want to spend a lot of money just buying random parts and trying to figure it out. I'd rather get to the root of the problem or at least narrow it down to where I'm confident this is the problem and I'm going to fix this and I know how to fix this. So the electrical system was pretty much non-existent when I pulled in and parked. Fortunately, there was a parking spot right in front of where I needed to be at. So I just pulled in, parked, said, I'll deal with this later. Let me go ahead and go into... Do what I gotta do. When I came out, I tried starting the car and it clicked two or three times, sound like it was gonna turn over and it didn't turn over. It's like, oh crap, what do I do now? So I let it sit for a minute, tried it one more time and fortunately the car started. But it was running in a very weird state. So I decided to, hey, I'm just gonna try to limp this thing home Fortunately, the freeway on-ramps are right next to where I was at. And because it's an electrical issue and it felt like there was a drain, I was like, let me get on the freeway. The car's running at a higher RPM constantly. Should be fine. So I actually got home. But by the time I got home, stretch and sweat, had to turn off the AC, turn off anything electrical just to try to save it. So a lot of people might think it's the battery, which it can be. But because of the other accessories that is ran by everything, 
might be the alternator. And the other thing that it could possibly be is the belt whatever gave out, which we'll take a look at right now. When I got home yesterday, I didn't even bother checking anything. It was stupid hot and I just wanted to go in and shower. So I just parked it, locked the car up and walked inside. Didn't even care anymore. But today, as you can see, it's sun's kind of setting a little bit. It's 96, 97, which is more tolerable than yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and start diagnosing and seeing what's wrong with this. So let's get into it. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and open the car, open the hood, have a very generic multimeter here, nothing special or fancy. I use this when I do diagnose any electrical issues for any air installs, not that I really ever have any or anything car audio related. I usually, this is kind of like my, uh, find the problem or find the issue uh, tool. If you don't know what a multimeter is, I'm sure you can Google it or look on YouTube, very easy to use. And it pretty much reads out how much voltage the car is putting out. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the hood, do some basic checks and kind of show you and go from there. Okay, that's a good sign. The car is not completely drained right off the figure. I don't know the way of opening everything. Go ahead and open the hood. I don't know if you can see in the camera, the car is extremely filthy. I was gonna wash it yesterday, but obviously that didn't happen and I'm not gonna wash it till I'm completely done with troubleshooting this car. So a couple of things to check. Took a look at the belt here. The belt is older, but it's not frayed, torn or popped off or anything. So we're okay there. But I do plan on uh, taking care of that real soon. But let me go ahead and check the battery. So the terminals actually look okay. There's not a whole lot of corrosion. It's a little bit, but it's not on the terminal itself or on the inside of the terminal, it's on the outside. So not a huge deal. I'd like it ideally cleaner, but uh, not gonna deal with that right now. Just wanna see what the readings are. So from here, you're gonna get out your multimeter. And for myself, I have it at 20, set it at DC 20, you turn it on, it'll read zero. And from here, I will need to put the camera down to get a reading because I need both hands. All right, there's a reading. It's 11.72 volts, which is a little above, or sorry, a little below 12 volts. But I'm gonna go ahead and get start the car and see what it's reading out. I hope this thing starts. Okay, it started. It's a good sign. It is a little on the loud side, but no worries. here it's still reading under 13 volts it's at 12.78 12.8 so mid mid to high 12s should be over 13 gonna let it run for a few seconds and kind of go from there all right turning the ac on it's now under 12 so I think I know what the problem is, but in the comment section down below, what do you think the problem is? I think I know. Two thousand years later. So I have to order a alternator based on the readings of the multimeter. I know the alternator is not doing its job. 
On this car, it's the original alternator still, and the car's about 15 years old, so it's about that time. And not that the previous owner didn't really take care of the car, it's more, you know, the car was kind of neglected its last couple few years, and you know, parts do go bad, so it's not the, huge, not the biggest deal. But upon inspecting the belts, or the belt, the serpentine belt, it's not completely gone, but it's to the point where I would rather just replace it. So I'm gonna go ahead and order all these parts up. It might take a day or two to get everything, or hopefully less, a day or two would be at most. I'd like to get this car up and running and everything ASAP. But yeah, this is one of those things where you, when you buy a 15 year old car sight and scene, this is kind of what it is. Fortunately for this car is everything was done at the dealership minus this very last oil change when it was already out of warranty. So I can go on Lexus.com, go to the owner's site, register for that, which I already did, put in the VIN number and it pulls up all the service records for this car that's been done at the dealership. So I know everything that's been done, what hasn't been done. And for the most part, she took pretty good care of the car most used cars that i come across haven't been that greatly maintained this one is actually on a scale of 10 i would say about a six or a seven and i'm usually pretty picky about things but overall the car's been really good to me like i said this is a wear and tear item it's just happening you know when it's hot but at least it's not july or august yet so i'm gonna go ahead and get that taken care of order some parts and in the next episode we're gonna go ahead and get that taken care of once the parts come in until then thank you guys again for watching the video definitely appreciate it and see you on the next episode